Hi everyone, today I'm going to be reviewing the random selection of conferences that occurred during what was formerly the week of E3, uh, and also a conference that occurred like a month ago. Let's go! PlayStation. This was bad. Not even in a funny way, just a sort of depressing sludge I had to sit through for an hour and a half. PlayStation usually has the best conferences. That one in 2020? I can't count the amount of times I did the Tim Allen noise. Even in the weaker years, we usually get one or two big meaty announcements. I don't really know what the fuck happened here. They've obviously been investing massively in live service games, and these are the fruits of their labor finally showing up. But live services don't really work in an E3 environment, and they definitely don't work when all you're showing is a CG trailer. Fair Games, Concord, Marathon, I don't know how any of these play. Concord especially, which for some reason is the one that's closest to release. If I have to look up what genre your game is after a trailer, I think the trailer may have failed. Marathon visually looks great, but the words PvP extraction shooter is such a buzzkill. And Fair Games just looks bad. I, I don't know why they started the showcase with this, but this is like the most forward-thinking, generic shit possible. It's kind of hard to describe, like, it its visual style is unique at the minute, but give it three years and every video game is gonna look like this. We got a trailer for a fucking movie. Oh my god, are you kidding me? We got some PSVR 2 games. Synapse looks cool. RE4 looks cool. I still don't see a reason how anyone could justify spending 500 quid on this thing. Metal Gear Solid Triangle got announced. <gasps> oh shit! <laughs> Konami's making it, so it's gonna be shit. Foam Stars is a video game. Um, this radiates servers being shut down 12 months after launch energy. Oh god, and that Wii U gamepad? Good lord! Later this year, we will launch a dedicated device that enables you to stream any game from your PS5 console using remote play over Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Did, does Sony not do like market research? Who do they think is gonna buy this? People like handhelds because they can play them wherever they want. On the bus, on a plane, in a big field, on the bog. There's only one of those situations that you can realistically achieve with this. And even then, it's probably gonna be a laggy mess, probably with a gigantic price tag, with the most obnoxious design possible. This is the most boring way you could try and hop on the handheld bandwagon, and I cannot see this being bought by anyone. G good job, guys! Out of this entire conference, there were only five games that stood out to me. One of them was Alan Wake 2 which looks unbelievably good. I never clicked with the first one, but this just looks stunning. And the premise for it too is fucking great. So please be good. <laughs> Phantom Blade Zero looks absolutely unhinged. <laughs> <laughs> Revenant Hill and Song of the Sea, hell yeah. And Spider-Man 2, holy shit. Spider-Man kills a guy, Spider-Man has a wingsuit, we're getting some of that Spider-Man free level of writing and performance, which is always a treat. It's got big teeth. So do I. It just looks great. Now is it 70 pound levels of great? We'll have to see. The rest of the conference I was doing this the whole time. So, not great. I think the main concern I've got right now is all right, I have this console, I spent 500 quid on it, am I gonna buy a game for it in the next three years? Spider-Man looks great, but after that the exclusives are looking pretty dire. Not saying they don't have some stuff up their sleeves, they probably do, but this is not a compelling showcase for anyone that likes the single player stuff PlayStation is known for. And those transitions, I've gotta talk about these, please stop doing them. 
I know PlayStation wants to present themselves as the Apple of video games, and showing some logos with some lights blasted through it is part of that whole presentation. But it really comes off as self-aggrandizing when you can't hold up that level of prestige through the video games you're selling. Quite bad out of 10. Jeff Keighley's Big Show. Historically, Summer Games Fest has always been very underwhelming, so I wasn't really expecting a whole lot here, but we got some alright stuff. Nothing remotely mind-blowing, but I wasn't pulling this face through the whole thing. Maybe something like this. Prince of Persia showed up and subsequently got disliked by everyone under the sun, but an important caveat, it's being made by the Raymond Legends team, so it might be good. Yakuza looks great, Liza P looks great, there's a new 2D Sonic, which is being made by Sonic Team, oh lord. Alan Wake 2 got some gameplay, come to daddy, yes please. Spider-Man 2 got some box art, oh shit, and some concept art, and a date. Why wasn't this at the Sony showcase? New Fortnite season? With Optimus Prime? Yes! Nick Cage is getting added to Dead by Daylight, and just look at the graphics on this guy. It just looks like the real Nick Cage. Pokemon with guns. That was pretty funny. Now, speaking of Final Fantasy... No, 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 no. Today, during Summer Game Fest, DoorDash has your back. Get, <laughs> you get a free burrito. <laughs> Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, I don't really care, but I will forever hold it against Jeff Keighley for hyping up what easily could have been Elden Ring DLC, only to be slapped in the face by Final Fantasy. What you're about to see is a new look at an expansive world. This game comes from a studio that redefined the RPG genre, its iconic characters, and rich storytelling for one of gaming's most anticipated upcoming releases. Go fuck yourself. There was also a lot of bad stuff. There was a lot of bad stuff. Half of the show I was almost asleep. Porsche themed Xboxes. Thank you for informing me, Jeff. This will definitely make me buy an Xbox or a Porsche. Twisted Metal looks like the worst thing ever made. Video game adaptations are back where they belong. A hell of a lot of very generic shit that almost made my eyes roll out of my skull. So yeah. Not a good show. Yeah. Summer Games Fest still has a long old way to go before it's remotely worth tuning into and not just skim reading an article after the fact, but this was b better. Give them five more years and maybe I might even break a smile while watching it. A little bit less bad out of ten. I've never watched a Day of the Devs before, so I didn't really know what to expect here, but this was pretty good. Nice to see the new Double Fine office, looks bloody nice. I'm not going to rattle through all of these because I don't have a take for most of them, but here's some of the ones that caught my eye. Henry Halfhead is a game about possessing everyday objects to try and live a normal life as half a head. Looks pretty funny. Ete, or et, or however you pronounce it, is a game about colouring in the world around you and looks absolutely gorgeous. Summerhill is a new one from the Alto's Adventure devs, and it's about herding some sheep. I don't know if I'm sold on that premise, but I have faith that the art direction at least will be stellar. And Cocoon. Good god, that game looks good. Last year's trailer didn't really catch me, but the second they started showing off how many layers deep you can go with the universes inside of universes inside of universes, my ears picked up. If I was a betting man, and I'm not, uh, I would bet that this one would be pretty good. Nice office redesign out of 10. The Volvo. The Volvo always do these over the top showcases that take the piss out of every other conference. Sometimes they're really good, sometimes they're not good and drag out the joke to ridiculous lengths. The last few years have been really lore heavy and I, I just don't care about the lore for some video game conferences. But this one was a full reset. This one's about Volvi, a very real, very famous mascot character Devolver had back in the day, and it's really fucking funny. 
Oh my god. Honestly, I think this showcase works just as a piece of black comedy or satire, completely independent of the games they're trying to market. And the only other Devolver show I think I could say that about is the first one they did back in like 2017. It shot really well. All of the animation and the presentation is exceptionally well done. It's clever, which is insane to say about a video game conference, but it is. It's not going to win any awards, but for a piece of marketing, it's easily the most interesting thing to come out of not E3 this year. I had a little peek at the credits. Turns out it was directed by one of the co-creators of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. So that explains it. And they had some video games too? What is this, a game conference? I don't really have an opinion on most of these. They, they, they look good, but Baby Steps specifically looks great. Seeing Bennett Foddy's name attached to a project makes me scared, but it's also being made by the Ape Out team, so I have faith. It looks great, it's funny, the soundtrack is really weird. A literal walking simulator is such a funny concept for a game, and by the looks of it, they've got something really special here. Pretty good, out of 10. I always look forward to the Xbox conferences, not necessarily because they're always good, but because they're really just the list of games coming to Game Pass. Here you go chum, you see all these? You don't have to buy any of them, you've already got them! As long as you keep giving me £8 a month. Last year's show was a little light on big deal announcements, and the all of these games are coming in the next 12 months promise is dated it horribly, but it was decent. So I was looking forward to another decent show. Honestly, it could have been just fine and it still would have been better than both of these. But Xbox went ahead and just said, screw it, let's do the best conference we've done in years. Gaming is the most powerful of all entertainment. It transports, it challenges, it connects us, and it's just incredibly and awesomely fun. <laughs> that is my team game after game after game, all of them looking great. There's still a lot of CGI or in-engine cutscenes, but at least those cinematics are for compelling looking games. Fable looks great. I, I don't have any attachment to this series whatsoever, but it's looking pretty good. Avowed looking very obsidian. Very hyped for this. Hellblade 2. My PC ain't gonna be able to run this shit. New Yakas are looking good. <laughs> that Capcom Ninja game looking good. Dusan is a game solely about climbing big mountains and I am very hyped. We got a boatload of new Persona stuff, which definitely didn't leak beforehand. Persona 3 remake? Hell yeah! They're only remaking the base game though. Why? Persona 5 XCOM? Sure, why not? Metaphor Refantasio? Directed by the same guy who did Persona 5? With the prettiest pause menu ever made? I'll play that! We got Bioshock Infinite 2? Um. South of Midnight was nothing but a cinematic. I had to look up what genre the game was which isn't good, but the art style and animation looks bloody lovely. Hi. John Wick! Holy shit! Guys, I spied him! <laughs> Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty looking gorgeous. A spy thriller set in that world sounds wonderful. Apparently they're overhauling a ton of the base game too. It sounds too good to be true. And it probably is. City Skylines 2. Fuck all of this shit. This is the real important stuff right here. The announcement trailer a couple months ago had me really worried they were going to pull a Sims 4. Just look at that logo, it's so bad. But I needn't have worried because oh my god this looks amazing. A massive evolution over the original game, with so many new systems, they've integrated some of the DLCs into the base game, which is nice, Paradox not being slimy for once. The UI could do with some work and it looks like they've sanded off a lot of the charm, but visually it's a massive leap. I am extremely hyped for this, and it's being dumped in Game Pass Day 1, so I'm a happy little boy. Now, Starfield. So obviously, it looks great. The sheer scale, the art direction, the sound design on the menus, love it. The shipbuilding looks hilarious, the combat looks great, I am ever so slightly interested in the plot. 
I want to explore all of this. I want to get lost in all of this. But I can't help but feel very uneasy about all of this. Not only because of this train wreck, not only because it has No Man's Sky cooties all over it, not only because Bethesda are known for buggy messes, but because random terrain generation and an open world exploration focused RPG sounds like the worst combo of all time. They said some stuff about how it's smart and tries to spawn places of interest close to you, which is cool, but a big part of why I like these kind of games is how curated they are. Every spot from here to here to here was made by real human hands. It was designed, it's a world, not a barren wasteland being generated around me. No Man's Sky is a pretty good game, but do I enjoy it for its exploration? Fuck no. I do not feel like I'm exploring a cool, never before seen planet. I feel like I'm exploring the same planet, 500 times, just with a slightly different coat of paint. Now, obviously, Bethesda is a much bigger game studio than Hello Games, and they've reigned in the scale significantly. But I'm still not sold on it giving me the kind of experience they're saying it will. Fallout 4 is the only Bethesda game I've ever finished. Which is a little sad, but even then, I have so many fond memories of just waddling across the wasteland and appreciating all the cool environmental storytelling and world design. Will Starfield give me that same feeling? I don't know. I don't think my PC will even be able to run it, for starters. I'm still gonna play it, obviously. Even if it runs at 15 FPS, I'm still gonna play it. Whether I'm gonna be purchasing the 85 quid deluxe edition with 5 days early access, some DLC that will probably be shit, an exclusive cosmetic and a free foot job, uh, that's a no from me. So, yeah. This is pretty good. I was really hoping for that Game Pass on Steam announcement. It's never gonna happen, but I'm gonna keep hoping until the day I die. But this, overall, w was pretty good. Lots of games, the games looked good, gameplay was shown, and I don't have to buy 90% of them. The bar was very, very low, but Microsoft proudly put one foot in front of the other and confidently stepped over it. So good job guys, proud of you. A grinning man out of turn. Ubisoft. I don't know, I don't fucking care. Avatar looks interesting. It's got two player co-op, which is nice. I might play this. Star Wars Outlaws. This thing's pretty cute. Might be good. I, I don't have a lot of faith in this company. Nice to see Rayman again though. Please let me escape this eternal torment out of 10. Capcom. I'm not doing Capcom. The PC Game Show. I'm not doing the PC Game Show. The Future I'm not doing the Future Game Show or however many other random shows there were. There's so many. Frostpunk 2 is coming next year. Hell yeah. There's a new Citizen Sleeper. I still need to play the first one. Bloomtown looks pretty good. That's it. That's all the takes I've got. I'm all taked out. In conclusion, back in the day, the E3 game is fun. sucked, but there was something magic about it. As magic as a bunch of press conferences can be. It was like Christmas, spread over a couple days. All the announcements all at once, it was wonderful. From an outsider's perspective, it's just marketing. What are you getting excited for? You're just being advertised to for a week while discussing the advertising on Twitter. But it's more than that, you know? It's the feeling of it, the anticipation, the big surprises and the communal losing of shit that follows. Having one week in a year etched out for the biggest announcements and then having it all dumped on you at once is a kind of magic that this sad display doesn't really get across. Phoenix Labs are building the next great entry into the cozy farm sim genre. We all like a cozy game. PlayStation did their show a month before anyone else and then sulked off. Nintendo dumped a Pikmin 4 trailer on Twitter and then vanished again. Capcom keeps trying to prove to me that they can justify having their own showcase and I just don't see it. EA didn't even bother showing up. We didn't get our mandated FIFA and Madden trailers. I feel robbed. 
I do think that having the announcements more spread out is a better thing on paper. It gives the smaller stuff more time to shine. I prefer the yearly trickle of updates instead of one big vomit of it all, but it just makes the eventual attempt at vomit so much more sad. <coughs> oh. No, E3 used to be pretty shit, but this is more shit. Overall, I'm miserable. Out of ten. Oh! <gasps>